Welcome to part five of our Errors in Program series. And today we're going to be looking at checking multiple criteria. Now, um, I'm recording this video during the COVID-19 lockdown. So one thing about um, problems or things that you want to avoid is prevention is better than cure. So if there's a way that we can prevent errors, that's ideal. So you would rather use uh, like components that will prevent the users from inputting values or criteria that are not valid. For example, you could use a spin edit to allow the user to only type in a number or you do those type of things. But at some point, you're going to have criteria that you can't necessarily prevent that you've got to check. And so in order to do the checking, you might need to check multiple criteria. And that can be quite tricky when you've got multiple if statements and multiple criteria. So I'm going to show you two techniques um, that I've learned about how to check for multiple criteria so that you don't get very messy if statements. So what we would have done in the past, let's say you've got a whole bunch of criteria and there's three criteria that you need to meet. You would traditionally try to use an if statement to check the first criteria and then the second criteria and then the third criteria. And if those are all three are true, then you can do what you need to do. The problem is sometimes those criteria are quite intricate in the amount of coding that needs to happen and what needs to happen in between. You need to do a whole bunch of like manipulation and sometimes it's very difficult for you to try to fit that all into mult in one if statement. And so it's sometimes better and more efficient to actually break those criteria into their own separate criteria and try to check them individually and find the way to best check them. And this in this case we're just looking at three but this could scale up for multiple or just for two if you wanted to do that. So let's have a look at the two different techniques. The first technique I want to talk about is the flagging technique. Okay, so the way flagging works is you use a Boolean variable and you set that Boolean variable, let's call it a flag variable, to true. So you basically you're assuming that everything is going to be okay. And what you're then going to do is then you are going to check for every time when the criteria is not passed. So you aren't checking if the criteria is true, you're going to check when the criteria is not being met. So you're actually checking the opposite of the criteria. So if they want you to check if all the marks are above 50, you're going to check if all the marks are less than equal to 50. So you're going to be checking the opposite of what the criteria is. So let's say we take the first criteria. We're going to check if that criteria fails. If criteria one fails, then we will set the flag to false for that particular criteria. We won't say else true because we already set the flag in the very beginning. We initialize it almost to true. For this, we simply check criteria one. If it fails, we set that flag to false. Then we will check the criteria for the second criteria. And if that fails, we'll set the flag to false for that criteria. And then we will check the third criteria. And if it fails, we will set that flag to false. So we'll check each criteria individually and you can break that up into a whole bunch of little bits of code and, and do some extraction or manipulation and then do the check. So it's, it's quite more robust. If we get to the end of this section of code, if we get to the end of all the checks, if the flag has still remained true, if it has never changed to false at one point, even though we checked when the criteria fails, that means it passed every single one of those criteria. If it failed one of them, it would have changed to false and it would have stayed false because we didn't revert it back to true. So if we get the flag to be true at this stage, right at the end of checking all the criteria, then we know that it passed all the criteria and then we have a success. And if it's false, then obviously one of those criteria failed. Okay, so that's the technique used when we are doing flagging. Now, sometimes this technique is quite limited with regard to what happens if you want a like you only want two of the three criteria to be true. That, this technique won't work in that case. So in that case, we could use a technique which I call counting. Um, you could use the counting technique as well instead of flagging. Um, I'll tell you about that at the end. But the way counting works is instead of using a Boolean variable to keep track of if our criteria have passed or not, we're actually going to use an integer variable, which let's call it count. And we are going to count every time the criteria is met. So in this, we're doing a little bit the opposite to the flagging technique. We're not checking if the criteria fails. We're checking if the criteria passes. And if the criteria passes, then we will say, hey, this is one of the criteria that is valid. So if this criteria passes, we say, hey, increase count. We have found one criteria that works. 
and then you'll check the second criteria. If that passes, we found another uh, criteria that passes. And then if we find a third criteria and it passes, we say, hey, this one also passes, so we increase count. So we basically count in for every criteria that passed. So in this case, when we get to the end of checking all our criteria, let's say we wanted um, the, to meet two of the three criteria, then we could say, hey, if the count is greater than or equal to two, then we've met two of our criteria, then it's a success. If you wanted to use this instead of the flagging method where you want all three criteria to be true, then you could just say if count equals three, then obviously they've met all the criteria. So this is a technique that you can use as well as flagging if you want all the criteria to be true. But this one's a little bit more robust when it comes to allowing you to check multiple criteria and say, hey, we only need two of the three criteria to be true and so on. And so those are the two techniques that I would suggest um, using when you've got multiple criteria, it breaks it down into little pieces which are a lot more manageable. And so that way it can help you try to catch any areas that have got lots of different criteria. In our next video, in uh, video six, we're going to be going through two examples of these where you can actually see how that actually works. So go along to that video and we can show you how to do that. Okay, for more videos on this series, as well as that video that I just spoke about, the part six, you can go to our YouTube channel, you can subscribe, um, you can like us on Facebook and Twitter, and you can give us feedback about what you like. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.